Large language models have visibility only to the data that they were trained with. The moment the training is cut off, they no longer continue to learn. So one approach to mitigate this problem is by using Retrieval Augmented Generation or RAG. In one of my previous videos, I walked through the theoretical elements of RAG such as indexing, chunking, retrieval and search. Now in this video, we're going to do a deep dive into implementing a RAG pipeline along with the LLM. Towards the end of this video, I show how I'm able to combine the RAG plus LLM pipeline to chat with my emails and get a response back. We're going to be using Langchain along with the ChromaDB as a vector store for this. So without further ado, let's get started. To begin with, I wanted the data dump for my RAG pipeline. So I went to takeout.google.com. This is where we could get any of our data that Google has got stored in its system. I'm interested in my mail data and nothing else. So I choose mail and we can see that there are a couple of formats that we can download from. One is the inbox format and the other one is the JSON. So I'm going to be using the inbox format for our walkthrough today. Under the labels, I've chosen archive and I've ignored all of the labels like inbox, send and start and I'm going to be clicking on next. There's the option to either download the email via your drive or you could get it on your Dropbox or get a link directly to your email using the link you can download the inbox file. I've chosen to download the link via email. I'm going to just click on export. Once we do that, we'll be getting a link in our email to download the zip file that contains the inbox file. So archive.org is a platform where we could look at the research papers on different topics. So under computer science, we can see that there's computation and language and computer vision and pattern recognition, two of the feeds to which I'm subscribed to. So if you go under computer vision and pattern recognition, you could see for each of the days there are different papers that were submitted in archive. It's the dump of this paper titles along with the abstracts that I get in the digest email every single day. So getting back to Google Takeout, using the link that I got through the email, I managed to download this takeout.zip file and unzipping that led me to this archive.mbox file. And this is the file that has got all the digest emails that I got from archive over the past few weeks. So now that we've got the data, let's start installing the needed packages. So we will need the beautiful soup to process the HTML document that we have got as a dump from Google Takeout. And we'll be needing Langchain, of course. So Langchain gives developers a framework to construct LLM powered apps easily. So we all are quite familiar with Langchain, so I don't have to go into the details about it. Langchain Hub was introduced in this blog way back in Jan 2023. They announced the launch of the Langchain Hub and say that it's a place where you can find and submit commonly used prompts, chains, agents, and many more. And it's also inspired by the Hugging Face Hub. So basically, this is the user interface for the Langchain Hub. We can filter based on the use cases. For example, if you're doing a chatbot or if you're doing classification, and then there are different types of prompts and also based on the language. And finally, you can also filter based on the model that you are going to be using. So in my case, I'm going to filter the prompt templates based on the application that we're going to do, which is RAG prompt. So if I filter on that and then sort by the most favorite, we can see that RLM slash RAG prompt is the one that comes right on the top. So we'll use this when we are actually yeah, developing our RAG framework. So next comes a Chroma DB. So in my introductory video on RAG, we saw that we need to index the documents and then chunk them and finally convert them into vector representations using embedding models. And these vector representations need to be stored in some database. And these databases are special databases called vector stores. And the, the database of choice for us is the Chroma DB. So if you look at the Chroma DB documentation, they say that Chroma is an AI native open source vector database focused on developer productivity and happiness. On top of that, it is also available to be imported readily from Langchain community. So that's the main reason we're going to opt for Chroma. 
So even though we have all the data embedded into embeddings and stored in vector database, what forms the heart of the RAG framework is the LLM itself. So for running inference on the LLM, we're going to be using GPT for all. So GPT for all seems to be an ecosystem of open source chatbots trained on massive collections of clean assistant data, including code stories and dialogue. And there's a separate website for it. So if I visit the website, it says a free to use locally running privacy aware chatbot, no GPU or internet required. So that makes our lives much easier. And if we scroll down, there are quite a few models available there, which can be downloaded and then they can be run readily on your local laptop. So these are all GGUF files. And I'm going to choose the easiest of these, which is the Orca Mini 3 billion parameter model, which is quantized to four bits. And the RAM that is needed is just four gig. And I'm, I'm sure these days everyone has a four gig laptop. And the size of the model that we'll be downloading is uh, 1.84 GB. So that's the one that I'll be using in our notebook. Moving on to the imports. So we've got a bunch of imports to deal with the email that we've just downloaded. For example, uh, Beautiful Soup is the class that we're going to use to process the HTML files. And we've got the email and the email policy, everything to do with the email. And then from the LangChain itself, we're going to be using Record Soup Character Text Splitter. So we're going to be chunking the input documents into fixed size chunks. So for this, we have to use some kind of a text splitter and the choice for us is the recursive character text splitter, which we'll go into detail when we actually look at the code. And then for the embedding, there are again quite a few options, but we'll be using GPT for all embeddings. The vector store is Chroma or the LLM itself because ours is a quantized model. We will have to use Llama CPP or the other option is that we can use GPT for all. So we'll see how it turns out with both the options. We also have to use the hub. And then finally, this runnable pass through is again, something that we'll be using to pass the different variables to the prompt itself, like which, which will again go through when we actually see it in action. This class, uh, mbox reader, is something that I just took from Stack Overflow in order to deal with the mbox file in which our downloaded archive emails are. So I'm just not going to go into the details about it. How we are going to use it is just like we are going to pass the path of the archive mbox file that we just downloaded from Google and the mbox variable uh, holds all the processed emails. So we're going to iterate these emails and we are only going to process 10 emails out of those. And after iterating through them, we are going to populate this archive content string and we're going to just grow it into a large string, which we'll actually be using later on. So if we visualize this archive contents, we can see that it has got the link to the paper. It's got the title, it's got the date, and it also got the authors and it's also got the abstract of the paper. So this is a format of a typical digest that we normally get from archive. So it's all been appended to the single string, which is archive contents. Just to be safe, I'm also saving the archive contents to a text file so that I can open and play around with it if you want to sort of visualize further and do some analysis. So the text data we have got in archive content is in a raw text. We need to load it into LangChain in order to use it. For that, we need to be using the document loaders from LangChain. So there are quite a few document loaders available in LangChain, depending on the format in which your input is. For example, there is a BibTeX input loader, there is a CSV loader, what we are going to use is the simple copy and paste document loader. Under copy and paste, we can see that the class that we're going to use is just document. So the idea is that if your input is just a plain text, then we can just pass that as page content to the document class. We can also specify the source from which it was taken as an optional metadata. For example, if it was taken from the internet or if it was taken from data stored locally. So in our case, we are mentioning that it's a data source is local and we are passing the archive content to the page content. And thus we are creating the, the document object. And then we have ingested the text data into the LangChain ecosystem. So once we have loaded the document into the doc object 
in Langchain will be using one of their text splitters in order to split the documents into different chunks. So there are two hyperparameters here. So one is the chunk size. We can choose a chunk size based on the, the model that we are using and also the compute power that's available at our disposal. I've chosen 500, which seems to work fine. And then chunk overlap is when the actually the size of the chunk that is overlapping between uh, two chunks. So it's better to have a reasonable amount of overlap, but not too much of overlap between chunks. In terms of the text splitter itself, the Langchain documentation says that once you've loaded documents, you'll often want to transform them to better suit application. The simplest example is you may want to split a long document into smaller chunks that can fit into your model's content window. So that's what we are exactly trying to do. We are trying to split the long document, which is archive contents, into smaller chunks. And there are quite a few types of text splitters available in Langchain. And one of them is the recursive one. And it says it splits on a list of user-defined characters. So ours is a list of user-defined characters. And in the description, it says splitting text recursively serves the purpose of trying to keep related pieces of text next to each other. So I think this is important in our case. We don't want to sort of randomly uh, jumble around the text that we are reading or chunking. Also, it says that's the recommended way to start splitting text. And because it's the first go to option, we'll be using the recursive character text split in our case. So once we have the text splitter, then we now have to gather all the splits using the split documents command and we'll split the documents and convert them into vector stores. We need to use the from documents com uh, function from the chroma and we'll pass all the splits that we have created so far to the chroma from documents function and in turn that returns to us the vector store uh, which can be used to sort of store the, the chunk documents. This, these vector stores are just uh, numbers and they won't be uh, characters anymore. And the embedding function that we'll be using is the GPT for all embeddings basically. So again, there are quite a few options for the embeddings for all. Let's actually look at the Chroma form from documents to understand what we can do. So bypassing the split documents to the chroma.from document function, we are creating a database. If you want to store the documents in the chroma DB format, or if you want to create an actual persistent store, then you can actually create the persistent store by passing the, uh, the chroma DB this option, which is the persistent directory and all your vector stores will be stored in this directory. So in terms of the embedding function, I've gone for GPT for all embeddings. And the, if you look at the documentation and the basic example in their documentation, they have used the sentence transformer embeddings. So moving on to the model we'll be using, we can either use a fine tune model that's fine tuned on your custom data set. So if you want to find out how we can fine tune, then you can check out one of my previous videos, which talks about fine tuning a JAMA 2 billion parameter model on a custom data set. Or if you want to use a pre-trained model, you'll just have to quantize it. My previous video about quantizing also goes through how you can quantize a given model, be it a fine-tuned model or it's just a pre-trained model. So there's a separate video I've done for that as well. So that will hopefully help you quantize. And also not to forget that there are a lot of quantized models that are available on Hugging Face Hub. And if you really want to quantize for any specific bits, then you may probably look into quantization. Otherwise, most of the models are quantized already and are readily available on the Hugging Face Hub. You can use either Llama CPP from the Langchain library, or you could use GPT for all. So I tried to use the Llama CPP and it seems to give error on Mac, but I managed to run this fine on the uh, Ubuntu machine. So I'm going to skip this part. You can try to run on Ubuntu and you should be fine. We can use the GPT for all. And all we have to do here is pass the path to the model. Like I mentioned before, we are using the Orca Mini 3 billion parameter model that is quantized to 4 bits. We're going to be using that for the model. So to test the model, we could just pass a query, say what is retrieval augmented generation. And it gives back a response saying that RAG is a technique used in natural language processing to generate a new text by retrieving and combining existing text. And it goes on saying blah, blah, blah. 
So that indicates that we have loaded the model successfully and it's now ready to be integrated into the RAG pipeline. So let's look into how we can create the lang chain with and without RAG. So let's see how it pans out when we actually use RAG for the same model for the same prompt. For that, let's first pull the prompt template from the hub. So this is the template we saw when we were actually looking into the Langchain hub. We boiled it down to RLM rag prompt, which will be ideal for our situation. So let's pull the same prompt template. And if we look at the template, we can see that the input variables are the context and the question. So the question is something that we'll be asking it, which is that what is the title of the paper that talks about awareness and context is something that is provided by RAG. In our previous scenario, we did not provide any context. We just passed a dictionary, which is empty for the context, which makes sense. So in case of RAG, we'll have to provide the context with the data that's retrieved from the documents, which is stored into Chroma DB, and we'll be providing the data from the Chroma DB basically. So what we are trying to do here is that just uh, written a small uh, function to sort of format the document content so that it's uh, it suits the uh, prompt uh, in a good way. So that's formatted in a nice way in, to suit the retriever. And for the retriever, we're going to use the as retriever function from the vector store. And we are going to pass the retriever to the as the context. And we're going to also format the data in the DB and then pass it to the context. And for the question, we are going to be using the runnable pass through from the lang chain. So runnable pass through allows us to pass input unchanged or with the addition of extra keys. To understand what I mean, like let's look at the retrieval example. So what happens here is that for the question, we have just mentioned runnable pass through class. And whenever we invoke the uh, retrieval chain by asking a question, where did Harrison work? The input is going to replace the runnable pass through. And so the question colon will be followed by the input that the user has passed, which is where did Harrison work? That's the capability of runnable pass through. The rag template is the one that we just created. And the LLM model is the model that we just created using the GPT for all. Finally, we're going to process the output using the string output parser. When we ask the same question, what is the title of the paper that talks about awareness? The response that we get, it seems much more better. And it says the title of the paper that talks about awareness is I think therefore I am awareness in large language models. So if we look at our archive contents.txt, we can see that there is indeed a paper with the title, I think therefore I am awareness in LLM models. And in the abstract, they clearly say that we introduce the concept of awareness to LLMs, arguing that awareness is an essential aspect of trustworthiness for LLMs. So clearly this is the paper that introduced awareness to the LLM community and that's what the model returns to us and which is really good. So that brings us to the end of this demonstration about RAG along with LLMs guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you in my next video. Until then, take care.